Hi, welcome to another Quick Flicks episode brought to you by Summit Racing. My name is Norm. We're going to take a look at uh, the Holly Performance 4 Barrel line again, the 4150-4160 series carburetors. And today we're going to talk about the choke circuit. Okay, so the choke, all right, the choke circuit. Why do I need a choke circuit? Uh, if you think about some of the things we've looked at in this series already, you know, the, uh, what's going on with my engine, the pistons up and down, the valves are opening and closing. I'm creating a vacuum signal uh, down below, okay? Now, it, when I close, here, let's just take a look here, all right? Sometimes that picture worth a thousand thi words thing is true. So, all right, normally at operating temperature, my choke plate is open. When I'm cold, you know, if I've sat overnight or I'm back to ambient temperature, the motor is considered cold. So at that point, my choke plate should be closed. All right, so now as the motor is doing its thing below the carburetor, you know, the, the piston's going up and down, the valves are opening and closing, it's creating a vacuum. All right, now because it can't, because this vacuum thing going on can't reach the atmospheric pressure uh, readily because my choke plate is closed it creates a very strong vacuum signal below my choke plate hey I think I got it right anyhow by creating that strong vacuum signal below the plate what it does is it allows fuel to pull off of my primary discharge nozzle or my discharge nozzle side of things also so I'm getting fuel right there that's a lot of fuel also I get additional fuel off my, uh, off my choke circuit because of my choke setting for the choke idle. Okay, so I have a choke idle screw. I have fuel coming over from my discharge nozzle. And as my screw opens up, what it does is it tips in. I don't know if I can have you see this or not. It tips in on the throttle shaft. So my, my primary throttle shaft is actually starting to tip open. So I don't know if you can see how much that is. It's not a lot but a little bit of increased idle speed does allow the uh, additional fuel to come from that side also. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a very rich momentary uh, or sort of momentary condition to allow fuel to get you know, through a cold engine uh, because you know, cold metal, cold aluminum, uh, cold situation, the fuel wants to drop out. There's, probably no emulsifying going on at this point because the temperature is not there. Also, I'm not getting a lot of velocity because if you think about it, my starter motor is only turning my motor over at maybe 80, 90, uh, 100 RPM at the most, you know, on an engine that should be fired up and idling at four, five, or 600 RPM. So, uh, kind of an idea what's going on with the choke circuit and why we need it. It gives us a lot of gas, it puts that gas down into the chamber um, and by getting a good, uh, a good spark to that fuel and by having that happen at the right time in the timing event, we get combustion, the motor fires, and you know, then two, three, four minutes later, hey, we're at operating temperature. At that point, I can turn my choke off and allow the leaner condition uh, and my previous settings that I've dialed in on my carburetor to come back and take control of my carburetor, okay? So now we know uh, why we need a choke circuit, okay? How about the different types of chokes or uh, no chokes on the performance line of Holly four barrels, okay? So let's look at the easy one first, all right? Here's a nice performance, uh, 4150, no choke tower, um, no choke circuit, no, where to, no, no choke, right? So what this guy is going to do, or this gal is on race day, uh, or in the garage tuning, whatever the case may be, they're just going to rely on a couple squirts from the accelerator pump circuit to get that extra fuel in there. Uh, a trick that I use is to take a shop rag, a clean shop rag, uh, run it under water, wring out the excess water, and then use it as my choke plate up top. Uh, if I haven't started the motor in a while, it's a nice little trick. Uh, and what it does is it, it, it creates that choke flap and allows you to get that strong vacuum signal uh, below uh, because you're not open to atmospheric pressure, okay? And then the extra fuel comes off of the accelerator pump circuit. 
All right, so that's a no choke situation. Also my old reliable, my old race carburetor that I, my favorite, you know, this is one that's been modified. It originally did have a choke circuit. It originally did have a, uh, a choke uh, plate, no longer does, okay? Although the air horn or choke tower is still present. All right, so from there, a choke system in the aftermarket uh, the first one we'll look at today is going to be the mechanical or manual, all right? Now that one is picked up for, oh, pardon me, got to have this, right? Okay, so here we are with a cable style or mechanical or manual choke, all right? And uh, as we showed uh, just a moment ago, uh, choke plate open, choke plate closed. Now when my choke plate is closed, I know you can't see this yet, but uh, I think we'll do a close-up later. Um, when my choke plate is closed, if you can see this little screw, spring-loaded screw, that is where I can set my fast idle speed, okay? Setting the fast idle speed a couple hundred, two, three, four hundred over my regular idle speed uh, is one of the ways that I get that extra fuel because I'm tipping in the throttle shaft and allowing fuel to flow from a different circuit other than my discharge nozzle. Uh, and we do want that extra fuel to be delivered. That's the whole point of the choke circuit. So uh, I make my adjustment there uh, and pretty simple. I mean, very straightforward. Your choke is on or it's off. Uh, there are some aftermarket chokes that are mechanical that will have a vacuum takeoff so that when the motor initially fires, what it'll do is it'll pop the choke partially open because the motor will no longer needs a full choke so it's kind of doing some thinking for you. Uh, that's not the case in this particular issue. Uh, the only thing with mechanical chokes you want to watch is be sure to unchoke once you get to operating temperature. Once you're headed down the road you look in the rearview mirror and this big black belch of smoke is coming out from the back of your ride, check your choke and make sure that it's off, okay? Um, other than that, a uh, manual mechanical choke, uh, we have electric choke. Uh, let's see here, on electric choke, I do want to show you what uh, goes on inside. Now this is a electric choke holly. Uh, it's uh, primary, primarily driven by a bimetallic spring. Bimetallic springs are two pieces of, of different metal uh, that are wound together. It's a bobbin style spring. So one expands and contracts at a different rate or different temperature uh, than the other. So when you have this bimetallic condition, one reacts to temp at a different rate. It allows the coil to open and contract um, at the rate of the more reactive spring or the more reactive metal. So here's my bobbin style spring. Now if you can imagine, now my housing is stationary. As temperature affects it, it would, it would ride or control the lever that controls my choke plate right here. So hopefully you can see this. Now just my choke plate is gonna go closed. So this is where I would typically be in an overnight situation or a place or a condition where the motor has sat and reached ambient temperature. Uh, you know, as heat from combustion uh, happens, it reaches the bimetallic spring and uh, eventually relaxes the spring, the tension relaxes, and I go to open choke. So uh, pretty neat, pretty straightforward. It is controlled by a 12 volt pigtail. They provide it. And the 12 volt pigtail would go to the a switched or keyed ignition side circuit. Uh, Dialing it in is pretty straightforward. You have a certain range of adjustability. There are built-in stops so that you cannot over choke or under choke. Um, and with an electric choke and with all chokes for that matter, you want to be sure that when you're at operating temperature that the choke is full off. Okay, so you want to be sure that for both the electric and the mechanical or manual choke. You want to be sure your, your choke is full open uh, at operating temperature and that you can reach that with the cable or that the, uh, the spring adjustment and setting allows you to reach full choke open, okay? Uh, a couple tricks perhaps thinking about chokes. Uh, depending on the nature of your build, you may find that 
having a choke that is not completely closed uh, to maybe where you're running a eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch gap to allow additional air to pass uh, will sometimes help a, a stubborn start or something like that. Some, some builds, some motors react favorably to a little bit more air and a little less fuel. Uh, this is actually a very simple circuit, so I think that we're really close. Um, if you have questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, if I've missed anything, please let me know and we'll try to pick that up again. Uh, if you would like to take a look at some additional videos, they're off here to the side. Uh, comments down below and um, you can also subscribe. So, hey, thanks for watching today and we'll pick up again with some uh, more Holly stuff in the next episode. Bye.